Brian Dolesky for Able Distributors. Today we're going to talk about using a duck calculator. Some people call them duckulators. I care. Anytime I see one sitting out someplace and it's free, I'm taking it. So I've got one that measures velocity. I've got flexible hard pipe, flexible insulated duct, a round duckulator, a larger duckulator, and the one I like the most is this one by uh, the company we get our, our heat sheet metal from. It's got your typical duckulator on one side, then on the back it's got the equivalent length for every single takeoff or turn. Any single, single time we change direction or we reduce the size, we have equivalent length that we add up. Now, we're used to using those terms equivalent length when we're venting a 90% furnace. Every elbow is a five feet or 10 feet or whatever it is. This is the same type of thing. So everything I'm gonna be talking about here, the Air Conditioner Contractors of America put out a manual D. Now the hardcover one is gonna run you about 180 bucks. This one, I'll, I'll try and put a link below. You can get it on Amazon for a few dollars less. Uh, it's a good book. But when they have a companion book, understanding Manual D, it tells you how complicated the first book is. And I really like this one too. So I'm going to put a link for both of these down below. So I strongly suggest if you can afford the 150 bucks for a hardcover right from ACCA, definitely get it. If not, this is a, a less expensive way to go. So when we're using a duculator, the first thing you got to determine is the friction rate. Now, a lot of guys just do rule of thumb. I talk to a lot of guys and they say, oh, I go 0.05 if the duct works really bad. I go 0.1 if the duct works really good. That's how I do it. And on a, most, most duculators, they have a little spot by 0.1 for the residential setting. Now, I don't know if that's for new construction, laying it out, and I'm going to get into that in another video. So this is going to be probably the first of maybe three or four. I don't scrimp these things out, so we'll see how long it takes. But to get what friction rate you're actually going to want to use on your duculator, there's a little bit of a math problem and a little bit of a layout problem. So what you need to do is get the equivalent length of the longest run, both for supply and return. Now that longest run might not necessarily be the one farthest from the furnace. There might be one ahead of that one that has more turns and twists, goes up to the second floor. So what I did was I kind of did just a simple little layout. Now, I got five feet, five feet, eight foot of duct, eight foot of duct, that adds up to be 26 feet. The change of direction of this air from the plenum to the ductwork, that's equivalent to 50 feet of duct. So we've got 50 and 26. Every elbow is 30 feet. A top takeoff is 35. Add in the length of pipe. The boot is 80, believe it or not, a four by 10 floor boot. So when we add all that up, the supply comes out to be 265 feet for the longest run. And that's, again, it might be closer to the furnace, but more turns and, and more equivalent length. On the return, things get a little bit different. We got the drop. That turn into the filter is equivalent to 35 feet. The turn at the top, depending again how it's done, is 50 feet. We've got eight, 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 so that's 32. So when we add all this up, the add the elbow, the oval stack, the stack head, the oval around, the top takeoff, we have 247 equivalent feet on the return side. So now we add those two up, it's 512. Now, to get to our friction rate, it's not just the furnace says it wants a total external of 0.50. Well, you just, don't put the 0.50 here. There's a little bit of math. So we take the A coil. So we started out with total external. That's everything outside the, the furnace. We're allowed 0.50. So we're going to take 0.1 off for the A coil, and that's pretty standard. We're going to take 0.05 off for the filter. That's a fiberglass filter. So if we do the math, that leaves us with 0.35 of available static pressure. Now, we take that 0.35 of available static, multiply it by 100, gives us 35. Divide that by the total equivalent length of the longest 
return length and the longest supply length. That's 12. We do the math, it gives us a 0.06. So now we have what this system we need to calculate and the friction rate we're going to use when we're calculating CFMs. The reason we do one longest supply and one longest return is because if we can get air to the hardest one, we know we can get it every place in between. So we always calculate to the farthest, the hardest one to get to, and that's the way it's done. Now, you may find that a 0.5, you're just not gonna be able to do it. And in most furnaces, there's a little guide that'll tell you how many CFMs you're gonna get at a 0.5, which, which would, would be perfect for them, but they'll go a 0.6, a 0.7, and you might find that you have to take that furnace and kick it on to a higher speed to get the desired CFM that you're gonna want. So this is kind of just an intro. Every single thing changes it. Now, they make ductulators or duct calculators for insulated duct because, again, the roughness, the amount of friction that air has as it moves through is different than just steel. They also have ones for flex duct because, again, that corrugation of the flex changes how air flow flows through it, and it's a big, big different. So this hopefully will get you started in how to come up with what you're supposed to be doing. Now in future videos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the rule of thumb. The rule of thumb, if you're, you're working in a basement and you can't see all of this and you're guessing, you're going to have to have some kind of a rule of thumb. And honestly, I would rather have a contractor use a rule of thumb than nothing at all and not care. Every single time you change air or you reduce air, you can make it better by using a reducer that's a tapered instead of just a, a flat capped reducer in a trunk line. If you had the plenum come up and have these trunks come off each side, off the side of the plenum, instead of just cutting in straight, if you actually used a takeoff where it's a 45 degree angle, so the opening might be 20 by 14, and then it goes down to 20 by eight. Instead of a 50 foot equivalent, that's a 10 foot equivalent. So there's things you can do to help the equivalent length and help your airflow. We've talked about it before, putting a furnace up on a box, putting a bigger filter in there, a bigger opening, a bigger drop. You can take, and on this one, honestly, what would be nice is if you could take that drop and miter it out and have a larger opening when you make that transition. All those things help airflow, help it down the line. So in future videos, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at something like this, and I'm gonna lay out how I would do it on a blueprint, a new house. How I would start laying out the ductwork, knowing what I'm starting with, what my first piece is gonna be, how many takeoffs I take off that first piece, do the math, reduce it, now I know what size my next duct is gonna be, and I go down the line until the very end. Sometimes it's easier for me to run it backwards and say, okay, I know this last piece of ductwork is gonna be this. I do it both ways, but for a training thing like this, I think it's easier to start with the furnace and say, it's a five ton, I know I want 2000 CFM, what do I need to start with and how am I gonna divide this up? If the furnace is in the middle of the house, you're gonna have X amount of duct going one way, X amount going the other way, maybe it's perfectly balanced, maybe it's offset, maybe that furnace is all the way to one end of that house and you got to move 2000 CFM in one direction. So that's what I wanted to do today. This is how you get the friction rate that you're going to use on your duculator. Again, these books are amazing. If you've got a little bit of a budget for books, I would buy them both. Understanding the Manual D, I wish I knew this book was around eight years ago um, because honestly, it's a, it's a pretty nice read. That's it. This is the first video of many. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, comment, be nice. Have a great day.